Web developer versus DevOps engineer. Who do you think gets paid more? According to a report by Dice, web developers get paid around $87,000 per year, whereas a DevOps engineer makes around $136,000. It's a mismanager. Solutions architect, principal software engineer, system architect, cloud program analyst, backend software engineer, data engineer, system engineer, project manager, scrum master. Now there are thousands of videos covering web development on YouTube, but like there you. are not many that cover the other higher paying tech skills. In this video, got a degree on that grind. Ah, ah. Video. We'll cover five such high paying tech skills. At Help number me. five, we have Go programming language. Oh shit, Go! What the f? What? The, bro, I just literally vomited in my mouth. <laughs> Go made this? Alright, now it's personal. What the f? Imagine a language that is as easy to learn as Python but as powerful as C. That's Go. Go. Also known as I mean, Golang. Relax. As easy as Python. Relax. Golang is a relatively new programming language created by Google in 2009. It has quickly gained popularity among developers due to its simplicity, efficiency, and versatility. Go is a general purpose programming language, which means that it can be used for a variety of tasks, from building web services to cloud. Bro, I know for a fact that's a GPT prompt because I've said the exact same shit from a GPT prompt in my earlier videos. Cloud native applications. Go can do it all. Go has built in support for concurrency which is the ability 100 I, I think i had the same script literally in chat gpt ability to run multiple tasks simultaneously this makes it ideal choice for developing high throughput and low latency systems go can help you get jobs like cloud engineer and backend engineer but how much can you expect to get paid if you know go according to the same dice report that i mentioned earlier programmers who know go can make around hundred and forty five thousand dollars per year go also ranks that's not bad. That's not bad, yeah? That's not bad. If you guys like Go and this kind of content, make sure you click subscribe button. It does help the channel a lot. A lot of effort goes into these videos and it truly is the best way to support if you enjoy. But let's get back to the video. The Thank skills you for the comment. with fastest growing salary. If you remember from earlier, I did say that Go is as powerful as C++. You well, did. that is not completely true. You While lied? Go is faster than most other modern you lied? languages it still cannot match the performance of C++. To truly match the performance of C++, we have Rust at number four. In the bro, 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 bro. Uh, next time, say it to my face. <clears throat> world of low-level programming, Rust stands out as a rising star. When the speed of execution beats all other requirements, for example in operating system kernels or game development, Rust is the preferred modern choice. Excuse me? For game development, Rust is the preferred modern choice? Is that true? Or is that not true? Because who the fuck be building games using Rust? Rust ensures memory safety through its ownership and borrowing system. This means that code is immune to memory leaks and other common programming pitfalls. Rust is constantly ranked among the most loved programming languages in recent times. So how much does it pay to know Rust? If you have Rust in your skill set, you can expect to make around $137,000 per year. So how is it higher paying than fucking Go? Who do you think gets paid more? We have what are you talking about? Go was 145. Rust is 137. How is G Rust higher? What the fuck? By your own logic. Docker and Kubernetes. If you're a DevOps. What are you talking about? Ops engineer, you would already know what Docker and Kubernetes is. Docker and Kubernetes at number three. But for others, let me explain real quick. You know what I'm gonna do, chat? OpenAI.com. Chill. Everyone relax. Everyone, everyone fucking relax. Uh, create me a simple script uh, for a YouTube video short and concise explaining docker and kubernetes all right <clears throat> this is yo i pay for gpt dude i got i got that premium shit i got that good gpt bro what it can't even do this are we over uh, dude are we overloading it? Is bro about to get caught in 4K? What's going on? Why do I pay for you? For your services, GPT. There you go. Thank God. You just gotta smack it a little bit. You just give it a little smack a little bit. You know? You gotta give it a little smack, smack across the face. <laughs> on oh, it's giving us on-screen text. Section three, bro. I don't need a fucking novel. No, stop, bro. I literally said short and concise. That gave me like the script to B movie. You like jazz? 
<laughs> and screen with subscribe button and video recommendations. You you know too much, man. Let's order Docker. Docker is a platform that allows you to package your application all of its dependencies to a container. This makes sure your application works seamlessly in any environment. Docker offers several benefits. It ensures you're consistent across multiple development and release cycles. Let's, okay. Imagine okay, that you're a chef and you've just perfected your grandma's secret lasagna recipe. You want to share it with the world, but you also want to make sure it tastes exactly the same, no matter where it's cooked. This That's analogy where is Docker crazy. comes in. Docker is like a portable kitchen that lets you package up your entire cooking process, the ingredients, the utensils, the oven temperature, and everything. You can package it all up into a neat little container. This container and its copies can then be shipped to any kitchen in the world, and the lasagna will taste exactly the same as if you made it yourself. In the software world... Damn. Okay, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Okay, now explain it with a lasagna analogy. <laughs> Uh, certainly using it. <laughs> Certainly, using a lasagna analogy can be a fun, related way to explain the content Docker can Imagine making lasagna. Each layer of your lasagna can represent a container in a Docker. Just so like how each layer has different ingredients. Okay, bro. Docker does the same. This thing man for knows Docker. It lets developers package up their code, libraries, and dependencies this man actually knows containers, Docker. which can then be run on any computer without worrying about compatibility issues. If Docker is the portable kitchen, Kubernetes is the catering company that acts as the central coordinator, ensuring that all the kitchens are working together he seamlessly knows too much. in the software world. Kubernetes automates the deployment and management of containerized applications. Kubernetes would restart failed containers, scale the application up or down, and roll out new versions of the application. Dude, you can really see That's when you look at the script. You can, like, did you guys see that? Hold up. Deployment and management of containerized not applications. not a bad thing. Kubernetes would restart failed containers, scale the application up or down. Right there. You see that? He looked, he looked a little bit. He looked a new little bit. Not a bad thing, but... That's too much information. Let's get to the good part. How much do DevOps skills like Docker and Kubernetes pay? You can expect somewhere around $139,000. As we discussed earlier... Bro, am I tripping? Or is Go salaries? Like, in his video, aren't Go engineers making more than number four and three? Who do you think gets paid more? How is Go at the bottom if it pays yes. more? But where do these applications actually run? Run. These applications run on a group of servers or nodes which is also called Kubernetes cluster. And these servers would usually exist in cloud which is what we have at number two. AWS, GCP, and Azure are some of the most popular cloud providers. If you look at AWS, these are some of the services. I, there's so many here that I don't even know. EC2, I don't know what LightSail is. Uh, okay, I know all the others besides LightSail. I don't know EFS, FSX. I know Glacier. I think I know Storage Gateway. I don't know what AWS backup is, but I can imagine. RDS, Dynamo, Elastic Cache. Okay, Elastic Cache is Redis. Blockchain, didn't even know this didn't exist. Didn't know this didn't exist. Ground State. That's pretty dope. Machine learning goes deep, man. Machine AR VR, that's actually wild. AWS is literally source for everything. Each of these services does a specific thing. For example, Amazon EC2 lets you rent virtual servers on cloud. AWS Lambda lets you run your code on the cloud. You can expect to get paid around $145,000. At the top, so the same? we have MapReduce. What? What the fuck is MapReduce? Wait, is this gonna be a plug? Is this a plug? Yo, is this a plug? Imagine that you have a massive pile of books and you need to count how many times a specific word appears across it's a all of them. Tool? If the number of books is very large, the task would be very difficult. And that's where we need MapReduce. Think of MapReduce as two-stage process, mapping and reducing. In the mapping... No way. Wait, really? MapReduce can be broken down into mapping and reducing? You divide the work among many servers. That's fucking crazy, Sahil. Called helpers. Each helper takes a book, reads it, and creates a list of all the words and their I'm counts. blown away. They then hand over these lists to the reducing stage. In the reducing stage, another set of helpers combines the list from mapping stage. They add up the count for each word across all the lists, giving you the final tally of how many times that word appears in the entire pile of bugs. Okay. MapReduce operation is done with the help of Hadoop. Hadoop, Hadoop is an open source framework that stores and processes large... So you can, okay, so I know what this is. And the real-time version of this is called Flink. You can read more about it if you plan to be become a data engineer. In terms of salary, you can expect somewhere around $146,000. I think he should have said number one is data engineer, not map reduce. I think that kind of shows that he doesn't know what he's talking about, no? But why wouldn't you focus on Spark or Flink instead? Like who fucking, Apache has made things that are way better than Hadoop. I use Flink all the time. I've used Spark uh, sparringly. I've never been told like, hey, be a map reduce engineer. Like, nani? I gotta go to the washroom. Who wants to be in charge?